Welcome to FOMO Consulting for your daily AMC stock analysis video on Sunday, May 23rd. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go over this week's battle plan, and it's a good one. And as always, the apes are winning, the diamond hands are winning, and most importantly, the retail investor is winning. So if you find this video informative and entertaining, please like, share, certainly comment, and most importantly, subscribe. It's a newer channel, and I would appreciate the support. Let's get into the video. First of all, thank you to everyone who has liked, shared, commented, and subscribed. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you. Let's start with a quote. I suppose one quality in an astronaut more powerful than any other is curiosity. They have to get someplace nobody's ever been. By famous and early pioneer John Glenn in the space program. No doubt we are trying to get someplace nobody has ever been through AMC stock. We are trying to get to the moon. And what a view it would be from there, right? So everybody's a little concerned about on the crypto markets these days, uh, and rightfully so. But uh, again, there's just so much scrutiny on it right now. Obviously, the comments in China and other recent comments have certainly put some fear in the market. But overall, let's try not to uh, overreact. Keep in mind, it is an international currency. Uh, so a lot of rules and regulations, a lot of scrutiny internationally are on this. So no doubt, uh, you know, it's certainly volatile right now, but I believe longer term, it's still a uh, good play. Just my opinion, not financial advice. So let's look at AMC, how it performed Friday. Quick review, $12.08, closed up a, a bit after hours. Uh, followed the NASDAQ pretty closely throughout the day. Uh, obviously, a lot of selling pressure, fairly light volume, nothing to fear. I believe we are in perfect shape. And again, closing above $12. Uh, keep in mind, you know, two weeks ago, we were arguing about 9 to $10, right? So it's a healthy level. I think we found some good support at $12. And we'll see how the week plays out. So overall, bigger picture, one hour chart, certainly on the uptrend, we've regained kind of that red illustrated trend line. I think we're in fine shape. The uh, indicator certainly uh, needed to cool off a bit after last week's run or so, uh, but I think we're in a, in a fine place. Again, bigger picture, daily chart, clearly on an uptrend since uh, really the first of the year, I believe is speculating uh, we could potentially look something like that over the next 30 days or so uh, so again just speculation fun to play around but we do need to uh, cross that 14 1450 level if we break that find support there i do believe we will go to the moon so again uh, bigger picture long term clearly on an uptrend MACD is clearly in a bullish crossover. We're fine there. RSI, as you can see, got a little bit overbought, had to cool off, but still in bullish territory. And the alligator's mouth is clearly wide open, and he is hungry. So yet another look, just a quick review. These are the weekly candles. Uh, I believe that we might be forming a cup and handle type formation, but again, just my pure speculation. You can see where MACD uh, bounced off the signal line and we continued in the bullish direction as well as the RSI is still very much in bullish territory but not in overbought uh, in the overbought area so let's look at again quick look moving average alligators mouth wide open more recently I am feeling very bullish about this upcoming week I believe we needed to cool off and come back towards the overall trend Got a little bit extended above the moving average, but I think we're in fine shape. So if you look at where we've been early on in the orange area, that was between the two and four dollar range, right? Good time to buy in. Obviously, baby squeeze. Then we spent a fair amount of time between the five and seven dollar level. Then we've basically spent an eternity, what feels like, in the nine to eleven dollar channel, bounce, bouncing around, right? In mid-March, we broke above that, and we could not hold it. The most important thing we can do 
uh, this week, in my opinion, is stay up in that upper channel in the green area. Uh, hopefully we found support at $12. If we break below it, it's not the end of the world, but it certainly would be nice to stay in the green channel. So let's look at a little bit of technical analysis here. Uh, according to this person and their analysis, uh, AMC has now entered, and this was published, I believe, on the 18th, enters wave five of the Elliott wave cycle, which is a bullish indicator. Uh, it clearly would uh, help us out awful lot. And the next Elliott wave price target of $16.62. We do need to get back, in my opinion, up into the high 13s, low 14s for that to apply. Again, just my opinion, uh, but I believe we'll do that early this week. And you can see the overall technical analysis sentiment in the short, mid, and long term on the right side. We are in strong on all three. So, again, technical analysis, RSI is above 50, MACD is positive, and Above its signal line, the configuration is positive. Moreover, the stock's trading above its 20 and 50 day moving average, respectively. Now, keep in mind, uh, this was based on when the price was around 14 or so, uh, but we are still in a very bullish setup. And you can see this report, uh, supports and resistances on the bottom left. So, like it or not, we're tied at the hip. So, if you look at the upper uh, upper trend, that is the alligator, mouth wide open, clearly uh, a bullish sign. The moving average is starting to move up. The RSI is in bullish territory, somewhat waking up, and we have now got a shallow but positive bullish MACD crossover, and this is on the daily chart. This is GME. GME is our big brother, like it or not. What GME does, we tend to do. We are connected in a lot of different ways through ETFs and, and what have you. Uh, if GME wakes up, no doubt it is going to help AMC and vice versa. Uh, I believe somewhat of the awakening over the last week or so in GME is no doubt associated with the run up of AMC. So the more pressure GME and AMC collectively put on the hedge funds, the absolute better. Just my opinion. So if you're looking for something to do today or over this week, it's an older movie, but it certainly uh, applies the overall uh, theme of 2001 Space Odyssey. It was made in 1968, but it was cutting edge for its time. It's been remastered a couple of times. 2001 is an ambitious film. It attempts to tell the story of the evolution of humankind from primitive ape, huh, creature of the distant past to advanced star being of the near future, while also exploring ideas like man's place in the universe and artificial intelligence. So again, I believe this might apply and you can rent it on YouTube. So I'm sure everyone saw the SNL <laughs> skit last night around AMC. So let's look at why they would have done that. Is it FUD or is it just poking fun? Let's find out. So just the facts, right? So let's look at who owns NBC Universal. It is Comcast. So Comcast owns it. So if you look at the overall ownership, the largest owners are, go figure, Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street. No different than AMC. Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, the largest investors in both organizations. Let's move forward. So this is the short interest from Ortex or Comcast. Obviously, parent company of NBC, which runs Saturday Night Live. So you can look at the exchange reported short interest of 72.1 million uh, shares. The estimated short interest percent of free float is 1.11, very minimal. Shares on loan are 7.8 million. 
Days to cover is less than half a day. Cost to borrow less than or around half of 1%. And utilization is at a paltry 0.36. It is institutionally owned. They are not going to short themselves. Very similar to Cinemark. Let's go forward. So your complete guide to everything owned by Comcast. First and foremost, keep in mind, Comcast owns popular film studio, Universal Studios, right? Comcast partnered with Disney and 21st Century Fox to form, go figure, Hulu. Hulu is a burgeoning streaming service. And we all know Hulu, Netflix, and others uh, really grew substantially during the COVID uh, pandemic, the lockdown, everyone stuck on the couch watching streaming services. So why would they want that, right? So going forward, last July, Universal and AMC Theaters forged historic deal allowing theatrical le releases to debut on premium uh, basically streaming service. So keep in mind, Comcast, NBC, and Universal all have a vested interest not to have AMC do well because they do not want you back at the movie theaters. They want you on the couch watching streaming services. Their videos on demand. They want you to watch Hulu. They do not want the gravy train to end, which is why they were part of the FUD uh, satire last night. But they were trying to prove a point. It was clearly fun, and there's a motive behind it. So a lot of discussions around margin calls. I showed this yesterday. You can clearly see this is the S&P blue trend line price action going all the way back before the tech bubble. We are in an extraordinarily uh, unique environment of margin debt, and no doubt it will cause some pain when those calls come. So for some of you younger viewers that may not have been around in 2008 housing crisis or didn't care, this is Citigroup, $570 a share, down to $970 in less than a year. This is AIG, $1,300, down to $2.95. Fell off a cliff. These were bad times. Morgan Stanley, $84, down to $1.25. Bear Stearns. Hedge fund, collapse, broke. Lehman Brothers, hedge fund, collapse, broke. There's a lot of people lost a lot of money and people lost their homes, people lost their jobs. It was just a bad, bad time throughout the US economy and the world economy. So if you'll permit me just a moment, I would like to read you a brief story. Story time with FOMO. So hang tight and I'll uh, sure this will entertain you. So the story goes, this elderly lady handed her bank card to the teller and said, I would like to withdraw $10. The teller told her, quote unquote, withdrawals less than $100, please use the ATM. The elderly lady wanted to know why. The teller returned her bank card and irritably told her, quote unquote, these are the rules. Please leave if there's no further matter. This is a line of customers behind you. The elderly lady remained silent for a few seconds and handed her card back to the teller and said, please help me withdraw all the money I have. The teller was astonished when she checked the account balance. She noticed she nodded her head, leaned down and respectfully told her, quote unquote, you have one point three million dollars in your account, <laughs> but the bank doesn't have that much uh, cash currently. Could you make an appointment and come back again tomorrow? The elderly lady then asked how much she could withdraw immediately. The teller told her any amount up to $3,000. The elderly lady says, well, please let me have $3,000 now. The teller kindly handed her $3,000 very friendly and with a smile. The elderly lady put $10 in her purse and asked the teller to deposit $2,990. $90 back into her account. The, the moral to that story is, as it relates to AMC, and there's a lot of takeaways, is the big banks, they set the rules. 
but they underestimate the retail investor, the apes, the diamond hands, about number one, how intelligent we are, number two, how many resources that we have. They just think we're a bunch of smooth brained apes, right? Overall, they have underestimated us and it will be their downfall, no doubt. So quickly, review of Wanda, no big deal, fantastic in my opinion, one less negative thing to worry about. Nice little hit piece, as usual from Seeking Alpha, Quiet Weekend shows cinema bounce back face of our troubles, knock yourself out if you want to read it. The BTIG SEC legal uh, lawsuit around uh, short sale uh, reporting is certainly a, a great thing for us. It sets the stage and I believe just after some time to reflect on this, when you're a, a large investigation, in a large investigation, you go after the small fish, right? You go after the small guys and you encircle uh, till you get to the big boys. You don't start with the big boys. So they seem to have a strategy, whether it's Archegos or now BTIG, and there will likely be others, that they're going to continue putting pressure to send a very clear and concise message to the large institutions that they are not playing around anymore. So again, we've had our fair share of FUD, we've had 500 million share dilution, we've had COVID, we've had now Wanda, and the 43 million share dilution uh, at the market equity, all these different things. The sun is now shining on AMC. We aren't going anywhere and we have the brightest of days ahead. And as speaking of bright days ahead, uh, holiday weekend in the United States, uh, spend a couple bucks, spend a couple hours, go find you a great movie at AMC, some great titles coming out of Quiet Place 2 and Cruella among others. Short interest review, pretty well flat, uh, no major changes. You can pause this, I don't have to go through all that you've heard it all before, but at the end of the day, they uh, have short shares available and they use them heavily Friday. No doubt they will try it again over the coming days. So this is a nice little snapshot. Let me walk through left to right. So this is through March 31st. This is from whalewisdom.com regarding AMC. So if you look just through the end of March, very bullish in my opinion. Funds holding uh, AMC went from 178 to 229. Obviously the 13F shares increased substantially from 45 million to 114 million. That's just at the end of March. The total call and put ratio, as you can see on the bottom, uh, certainly the calls increased and now, at least according to this, it's about a 50-50 split. It was certainly leveraged more on the put side uh, back in 2020 and, and Q1, but uh, it's certainly trending in this direction. We'll have updated info in the next month or so, I'm sure. And if you look on the far right, you can see where hedge funds specifically are not only lessening the amount of shares, it went from 16 million to 13 million, their ownership has gone down, a uh, percent of ownership has gone down substantially. New positions, they have opened up a few new positions, but they have also closed far more. Uh, they had uh, 10 closed and now they have at least at the end of march they closed 22 positions so again i think that's very bullish and on the bottom right you can clearly see call put ratio is trending back even on the hedge fund side back to uh, bullish and the total call uh, volume is certainly in a far more bullish direction than bearish so i found a lot of uh, positive information in let me give you yet another viewpoint. The blue area in the background is the daily closing price. Uh, the call to put is the green line, you, or excuse me, put to call. So higher levels or puts, you can clearly see that is trending off. Volume is the red line, just daily volume. And then the uh, short volume is the pink line. So you can see even the uh, short volume has fallen off quite a bit from where we were uh, a month or two ago, uh, certainly back in March. 
they just don't have the firepower and I just don't think they have the willpower uh, any longer. They are trapped. We all know that. They're trying to get out of their position because AMC is recovering and there's no doubt about it. So I've shown this a few times. Certainly all the short interest trend data is going downwards and that's a good thing that allows uh, the price to rise. That means they're not uh, actively and aggressively shorting. They are now in a more covering posture. The short volume uh, or the borrowed share volume has picked up, unfortunately, uh, no doubt due to Wanda selling their show shares, although we didn't know that at the time. Uh, so there's more shares available to borrow, depending on if an institution is willing to loan them. So let's look at this week's data. So last week, uh, when closing at uh, 12.08, we put 83,000 contracts in the money. Uh, I think that is fantastic. Uh, usually sets us up for a very green Monday. So I am excited. So let's look at this week. So open interest, no doubt, will increase tomorrow, but this is what I have to work with. I believe the red lines are the absolute extremes, kind of the 10 to 16 range. Honing in just a little bit, really more between the 11 and 5 is the cautionary range, I believe. We could see this week based on open interest and volume, uh, but I believe the 12 to $14 level, again, will be the battlefield. If we can get above 14, and hold it, we are in a far, far different ball game, ladies and gentlemen. So as always, I have skin in the game, win together, lose together, diamond hands are the end. Right now, as I see it, my bold prediction is $12.50 to 14, wide range, but the options data, I believe, generally drives uh, what our opponent does. So we'll see what the open interest looks like tomorrow evening, and we'll go from there. Let me close with a quote. Resolve never to quit, never to give up, no matter what the situation. By Hall of Fame and one of the greatest golfers ever to live, Jack Nicholas. We are not giving up. We are not going to quit, no matter what the situation. We have already been through dark days. And as I showed you, the sun is now shining on AMC the apes, the diamond hands, and the retail investors. So I want to thank you all for watching. If you found the video informative and entertaining, please like, share, certainly comment, and most importantly, subscribe. It is a newer channel. But as always, I hope your life is full of green candles. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.